from Tampa Bay streaming news leader. This is ABC Action News. Hello, I'm Jamison Euler. Meteorologist Shay Ryan has Florida's most accurate forecast in just a moment. But first, here are your top stories at this hour. Pfizer released new data that they say shows the need for a third COVID-19 vaccine, especially to protect against the Delta variant. The pharmaceutical company reports antibody levels against the Delta variant are five times higher among people ages 18 to 55 with a third shot. But Dr. Anthony Fauci is not convinced third shots are necessary right now. And a local doctor at USF Health agrees, saying there are flaws in Pfizer's data. You can read more about that on abcactionnews.com. A new food hall expected to revitalize the Deuces neighborhood in St. Pete is closing its doors after just a few months. We took you inside the 22 South Food Hall in April. It's inside the Manhattan Casino building and former Bucks player Vincent Jackson was a partner on the project. Jackson died in February just before the food hall opened. And according to a post on Facebook today, his sudden death and quote lack of desire by his trust to continue led to the closure. The post also said they're working to place chefs and staff elsewhere. We've got some good news and bad news for Bolts fans. We'll start with the good. The Lightning have signed star forward Braden Point to an eight year contract extension. It's worth $76 million. The 25 year old led the Bolts in points and goals last season. Now to the bad news. Blake Coleman is headed to the Calgary Flames on a six year deal. Free agency opened at noon and within minutes Coleman took to Instagram to write a heartfelt farewell to Tampa. The news came just about 12 hours after we learned Tyler Johnson was traded to Chicago. And of course last week the Seattle Kraken took Yanni Gord. Now here's meteorologist Shay Ryan with Florida's most accurate forecast. Well, we certainly started off the day with a lot of rainfall, but tapered off in the second half of the day. Uh, now we're going to continue to see those chances for rain uh, tapering off or at least decreasing through midnight. After midnight, we'll start to see that onshore flow setting up again, giving us a chance for rain along the coast in the first half of the day. The second half of the day, that chance for rain will move inland. It does look like the coverage may be a bit lower through the afternoon tomorrow and possibly even in the morning. Uh, so again, we're getting a little bit of variation with these model updates, but the short of it being we do still have an onshore flow, so at least expect a chance for rain in the first half of the day along the coast and then inland in the second half. The coverage comes way down Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and that's going to allow the temps to soar back into the low to mid 90s, and it's going to be feeling like the upper 90s and low 100s anywhere from late morning on through the afternoon.